It is very easy to get confused about what is real and what is not when it comes to the leaks for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So, Central Leaks has shared a thread that discusses all the official leaks that Riddler Koo has released. And for those of you who don't know, Riddler Koo is the most reliable leaker for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as everything he said so far has come to fruition, and he also did the same thing with Pokemon Legends prior. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the Twitter thread that Central Leaks has shared with us that discusses everything we know so far for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that has not been revealed by Nintendo themselves or the Pokemon company themselves. Here we go. So as you can see, they label it as the summary for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks so far. The starter final evolutions are Grass and Dark, water and fighting, and fire and ghost. This is pretty interesting because a lot of people speculated that Fue Coco was going to be a part fairy type, and a lot of people also speculated that maybe Sprigatito would be a part fairy type. But it looks like none of them are part fairy type, and Quaxley of all the Pokemon is gonna be part fighting, which is a water fighting. Have we seen that before? I can't think of a water fighting type, at least off the top of my head. If there is one, let me know in the comments in case I forgot, but that's pretty interesting. And then as for grass and dark and fire and ghost, those may or may not be new typings as well. Gosh, there's like almost a thousand Pokemon. It's hard to think through all of them all at once, especially right here on the spot on camera. So you guys can let me know if we've had these typings before, but either way, these are pretty cool typings and I'm very excited to see them. I want to see Sprigatito's final evolution with it being a grass and dark. I mean, I want to see all these final evolutions. I wonder if that leaked um, Fue Coco final Evo is real. I feel like it probably isn't, but it does look like it fits the Fire Ghost moniker, so we'll see about that. Now it says here that Sprigatito's final evolution has a god tier hidden ability. It will be bipedal and seems it will be humanoid slash waifu like. Alright, there's a lot to unpack there. So when looking at this, <laughs> The first thing that springs to mind is, oh no, it's bipedal. I know a lot of people were wanting Sprigatito's final evolution to be on all fours. I think that would be quadrupedal, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. In which case, I'm kind of scared because it also says that it's a humanoid waifu material Pokemon, which is too bad because Sprigatito is such a cute little cat. I wanted to see it grow into maybe just like an elegant, animalistic creature, but it looks like it's gonna grow into an elegant waifu. Yeah, not for me. But um, it says that it's gonna have a god tier hidden ability, which is quite interesting. I wonder what that ability might be. Obviously, it's gonna be a big spin on the competitive aspect of the game. And I'm pretty sure that these games are gonna be used in competitive. So you guys are gonna need to get ready for that if you are in the Pokemon competitive community. I am not, but my friend Kayla from Kayla's Capsule is. So she'll be able to explain all of that once that gets revealed officially. Now. Here they talk about Quaxley's final evolution is the leaker's favorite design of the three. Interesting, it might end up being mine too because I think Quaxley has a really cool design and water fighting again sounds really cool to me. Legendaries are Dragon Fighting and Dragon Electric. Okay, we saw that with our own eyes and he leaked this before we got revealed the legendary so it's basically confirmed that this was all true. There's more than one object mon this gen. So for those of you who don't know, an object mon is a Pokemon who is based off of something like a set of car keys. You know, there is a fairy metal type that is based off a set of car keys. And there's also the Pokemon based off of a sword that was um, AG Slash. I should know this because he's in like every spinoff game ever for Pokemon ever since gen five. And then there's also the garbage bag from Gen 5, which is um, not Garbodor, but the pre-evolution for that, uh, Trubbish. So yeah, there's quite a few object mons already that exist. A lot of them are from Gen 5. There's a few from Gen 1, you know, like technically Voltorb is an object mon. It's based off a of Pokeball, even though it's not a real object, but you get the point. Um, now, they said there's at least four waifu mon and multiple Husbandoman, according to the leaker. Um, so that means we're gonna get a lot more uh, furry bait Pokemon. Like uh, right now, we currently have a lot of furry baits, such as Cinderace is a huge one. I see Cinderace people all over the place. Um, Lucario, 
there's Gar Gardevoir. Um, yeah, there's there's so many of them. I'm not even gonna go through the whole list. And honestly, a lot of them keep happening from the starters. And again, that makes me sad about Sprigatito's final evolution because that means she's just going to be another one of those. So, well, we're gonna have to put up with that, I guess. So let's go ahead and get back to the leaks. I don't wanna linger on that too long because it's kind of depresso espresso. Maybe not for some of you. I mean, I'm sure some of you are looking forward to your husbandomans and your waifumans, but me, I'm not the one. There will be new cross-gen evolutions. Now this is huge because I've been wanting to see evolutions for a lot of, especially Gen 2 Pokemon that are very weak. We got sort of that with Gen 8. We got Cursula from Corsola, but it was only on the Galarian form. I think Jotonian Corsola could probably still use an evolution, but some Pokemon like Delibird, who have never been viable at all, uh, but have really good designs, I would love to see an evolution for Delibird and many other Pokemon. Now, there is a confirmed one that we're gonna get into in a minute here. Uh, oh yeah, look, it's the next thing. An evolution for Dunsparce has been hinted. So that means Dunsparce is another Gen 2 Pokemon that I really like who is unviable and could use an evolution. And there you go. We, we are seemingly getting a Dunsparce evolution. There will be new type combos. Okay, so if we didn't already see that with the starter um, typing combos, if those are new typing combos, then we will definitely be seeing more of those uh, in the future for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I'm curious to see what kind of typing combos. What are some of the most requested typing combos? I actually don't know because I don't play competitive. Let me know down in the comments what you guys really want to see for typing combos. Now, continuing on, there will be a new cool fish Pokemon. Um, okay. I'm down with that. I, I think there's already a lot of really cool fish Pokemon. I personally really love um, Lantern, and I really love a lot of other sea creature ones. What was that one from Gen 7? The one with the really spiky teeth? I think it was Bruxish or something like that. Yeah, really cool Pokemon in my opinion. Really scary looking. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to see what they mean by cool fish Pokemon. Like, is it going to be like Sharpedo cool? Is it going to be like Bruxish cool? Is it going to be like Lantern cool? Those are three different kinds of cools. Like, Lantern's like an elegant cool, you know? Bruxish is a scary cool. Uh, Sharpedo is a, like, edgy cool. So I'm curious to see what that is going to be. The gimmick is related in some way to three types. Um, okay. So this could still work hand in hand with my theory about us kind of switching typings with like a typing wheel. But the more I learn about this game, the more I think that that actually won't happen having the typing wheel. Um, but I do think that we might have a temporary final typing uh, or a temporary third typing that will be applied to our Pokemon maybe once per battle or one Pokemon per battle. Or maybe there's an all new typing that is like completely special that is unlike any of the other typings and you can add that to always have a super effective move or maybe some other effect. That's very, very curious as well. Um, but there's all sorts of speculation we can make about that. So not to linger on it too much. I'm sure you guys have plenty of ideas. And again, you can feel free to comment them in the comments. This is where we have our discourses in the comments section of the video. The gimmick is a new concept of that when referring to Megas. Okay, so this kind of elaborates on what that third typing could be. So maybe that third typing gives them a new form of sorts, or maybe every Pokemon, something special happens to their appearance, kind of like Dynamax, how that could affect any Pokemon. And maybe some have a completely different form when they do it, like Gigantamax had. And then of course, Mega Evolutions is the obvious comparison to make beyond that. Um, but I want to see what that is for sure, and I'm sure you guys do. Again, any ideas, let me know. A regional form for a bull Pokemon, which a lot of people have been thinking is going to be Tauros. It could also be, uh, Buffal- oh wait, no, Buffal on to Buffalo. <laughs> but we have not seen any sort of variation on Tauros. There was a scene of a kid's shirt in the second trailer that showed a Tauros on the shirt, but it looked pretty much the same, save for like this one part near the mouth where there's like a band shape there. So maybe that's kind of a hint towards what it's gonna look like, but it's not much to go by and it might just be a sprite of the original Tauros design, who knows? Although that'd be kind of weird if there's a different Tauros in this region. 
Um, a regional form for water ground Pokemon. So water ground Pokemon, the only ones I can think of off the top of my head are Barboach in its evolution, Whiskash, and then also Mudkip in its final form, but I don't think we would see a new form of Swampert. So it's most likely going to be Barboach and Whiskash. Now, unless there's another water ground type that I'm not thinking of, Oh, there's also Shellos and and Shellos' evolution that I can't think of the name. Yeah, that's another water ground type, but they already have two forms based on like whether they're on like a west or east side of whatever region they exist in. So that'd be kind of odd to give them another form. In that case, they probably might have two more forms if it is them because they'll probably have an eastern variant and a western variant. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it's just a completely different take on Shellos and Gastrodon. We will see. Smoliv's evolution is the regional grass female Pokemon. Is that a thing? Is that like a subdivision of grass types that I just haven't noticed? Um, if if that is a thing, okay. I guess like Roselia was a grass female and so was Bidou, I suppose, for Gen 4. Uh, anyways, so Smoliv is going to evolve into a feminine looking Pokemon, which is quite interesting because Smoliv has a very, a lot like Badoo, has a very abstract, uh, just based on some like random actual plant <laughs> design. So it's interesting that they'll give them like actual humanoid characteristics moving forward with its evolutions. Again, I, it, I'm not a big fan. I don't like the humanoid variant, but some people love that. Oh, and this is gonna make someone I know very happy Go-Goat is back after not having appeared in a Pokemon game since 2013. Is that true? You could get Go-Goat in the Gen 7 games though, couldn't you? Sure, it probably wasn't a wild catch, but all the Pokemon were available. You could trade it to Gen 7, I'm sure. But it was the same model, obviously, as it was in Gen 6. So it's not like it was a big deal or anything. But yeah, Go-Goat hasn't been in a Switch title. So it wasn't even in the spin-off Switch titles so far that I can think of. It's not in Unite, it's not in Mystery Dungeon DX, it's not in New Pokemon Snap, if I'm remembering correctly. Not in Pokken, nothing. Unless it's a support type in that and I just didn't realize. I haven't gotten Pokken for myself yet. But I will soon, I've actually been looking into how fun it looks. So Go-Goat is going to be appearing. Dusty Go-Goat, my good friend who is here on YouTube as well, is going to be very, very happy about that. And it's going to be cool because, as we know, we're getting new Pokemon models from Legends on. And we've seen a little bit of that in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's newer trailers. And you can see that there's more depth to the models. There's more assets put into them or possibly even more polygon count. But I can't say that for sure. Either way, uh, it's going to be nice to see Go-Goat not only make a return, but with its new more developed model, <laughs> which is going to be really nice. So any Pokemon we see returning is going to be a very pleasant sight for sore eyes. Now, the leaker mentions that there's a ton of new cool Pokemon, quote unquote. Again, I'm not sure what they mean by cool. That's a very broad term, but I'm assuming they mean edgy. So when I think of cool Pokemon, again, Sharpedo was a good example. You know, I'm sure a lot of people think like Charizard is kind of edgy or something, or Blaziken, um, yeah, but cool Pokemon, we haven't seen it with the ones they've revealed so far, they've revealed some, they've revealed some cute ones so far, but not some, some non-cute ones, they haven't showed us any cool new ones, except for the legendaries, the legendaries look really cool, and if the legendaries are anything to go by, yeah, we're gonna have quite a treat with the new Pokemon, I'm very excited for that. The regional bug Pokemon will be Japanese themed, which is interesting as this is a Spanish region that we're going to be in. So having a Japanese themed bug type is going to be quite interesting. Um, we've had a lot of Japanese bug types, so I'm surprised that they would go back to that instead of doing something based on something that exists in maybe Spain or Portugal. Like Sword and Shield, not every previous starter will be in the game. So again, lending credit to the fact that I probably don't think Swampert would be <laughs> someone who has a new form in this, especially since they already have a Mega Evolution. I assume they would at least try to branch out from the same Pokemon, although they didn't do that with Dynamax or Gigantamax. They 
Gigantamaxed a lot of the same Pokemon that had Mega Evolutions. Yeah, yeah, they just, they pick their favorites, don't they? So yeah, not every previous starter will be in the game. That means most likely the Pokemon we won't see are going to be probably along the lines of Pokemon, f the starters from Gens 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll probably see the starters from Gen 6, probably not Gen 7. Maybe Gen 8, just because Sword and Shield was so successful, you know, they're probably going to keep wanting to capitalize on that. And especially if this region has a lot of cool furry bait Pokemon, then yeah, they'll probably bring in Gen 8 starters because Gen 8 was all furry bait. So going forward, um, as far as the leaker knows, there will be some Pokemon after SV that haven't appeared in any Switch game. Darn! Okay, it's as far as the leaker knows. So this isn't like... 100% bad news like we were scared about, but we'd, we've been wanting to make sure that at least every Pokemon gets a representation in a Nintendo Switch mainline Pokemon game, right? So far, there's still quite a lot of them missing. Like one of my personal favorites, Minior. It only exists in the spin-off new Pokemon Snap right now. And you can't like catch it or play with it in that game. Like I want one in a mainline game on the Switch. And I don't really feel like picking up my 3DS again just to play with Mining or for the one game that it was in. It was only in Sun and Moon. So what am I supposed to do? That's the only game it exists in. Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, which is pretty much the same game, just slightly different. So that's a bummer. And I'm kind of scared to see who doesn't make it because especially if someone like Mining or who again only exists in Gen 7, they should at least bring all the Gen 7 Pokemon and all the Gen 6 Pokemon back because they haven't had a chance to exist in many games because the Switch titles have let some Pokemon go and we need more Pokemon. <laughs> we need all the Pokemon to have at least some representation in the Switch titles. And now there is a possibility though that even if they're not included in the base game, maybe just like Sword and Shield, we will get DLC for Scarlet and Violet. It's more likely because it follows a similar format to Sword and Shield as opposed to Legends, which only got free DLC that didn't give us any more Pokemon or areas added. But maybe uh, Scarlet and Violet will give us that. And if that's the case, then maybe we will see representation for every Pokemon by the end of Scarlet and Violet's lifespan. And maybe part of the way they'll sell that DLC is to say, look, all the rest of the Pokemon are back, which, yeah, it's kind of scummy, but it's better than nothing, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it just sounds like I'm trying to find positives where <laughs> things are just scummy. I don't know. Um, but I'm sure you all have your own thoughts on that, and I'm sure it's divisive, so we're not gonna be focusing on that too much. I do think that at least by the end of Scarlet and Violet's lifespan, every Pokemon will have representation. I do feel very confident in that. So don't think that you're not gonna see your favorite Pokemon have at least one Switch title mainline that they can be in. Um, so, Lechonk's evolution will be female looking, but ugly, something like pure ugly, possibly, okay. You know, that sounds par for the course. Um, I kind of expected that. I'm honestly not a big fan of Lechonk, but like the fact that it's kind of a meme Pokemon makes me think, yeah, it makes sense that it would kind of end up just being ugly. I imagine it's going to be along the lines of like pure ugly, like they said, or maybe Wooloo's evolution. I forgot the name of it, but Wooloo was really cute, actually. I thought Wooloo was really cute, but the evolution was not it. Um, but that's probably what we're going to see again here with Lechonk. It's been hinted that the legendaries have five of something. Forms, maybe? Five of something. Interesting. So this could mean maybe there's going to be five legendaries? Or the legendaries are kind of like Deoxys, where they can change their form in five different ways. Maybe they have attack variations, speed variations, something. Thing along the lines of that, I don't know. If you have any other ideas besides that, let me know down in the comments, but that's really all I can come up with on the spot right now. The legendaries are writable in some way. Oh, that's confirmed. I actually didn't know that was confirmed by Riddler Coop. Okay, so if that's the case, yeah, they're gonna be motorcycles. Like, at least the electric one is probably gonna be a motorcycle. The other one is probably going to take a more traditional form of something. I don't want to say like a wagon, that would be kind of weird. Maybe a horse. 
that wouldn't make sense because it's kind of like a giant kimono dragon. Um, but uh, I'm curious, or maybe it just like runs with its hands, and then the other one is more like a motorcycle with the way it flies. It doesn't maybe change form per se, but like kind of uses those jets at the bottom of it because you know the electric one has those jets at the bottom of it, like it's a motorcycle already. And then the other one probably just uses all four of its limbs to go really fast. It's probably gonna look really cool actually. It's probably gonna look cooler than the electric one when running as we ride it, but. I'm still going with the electric one and violet version, personally. Now here's some cool artwork. Look at this form for Quaxley that they came up with. It's not what I pictured. I definitely think they're gonna be much taller and much more uh, aggressive looking, but like, this is a unique take, I would say, on what Quaxley could look like for its fighting water type form. <laughs> Um, oh, this is from Kirby in the Forgotten Land. This is what Sprigatito's final form will probably look like. You know, this looks a lot like Sprigatito. This is kind of creepy how much it looks like Sprigatito. Oh man. Yeah, so that's happening and of course everyone's jo- Okay, this is kind of cool. Now, if this is the humanoid waifu form of Sprigatito, I would be down with that. Look at how cool this design is. I wish this was- the actual one. Hopefully the actual one is as cool as that because that was dope. Okay, it's not gonna... Wait, would it be? No, it can't be Egyptian. That's not a Spanish thing, right? Isn't Egyptian? That's more like... And that's a completely different continent, I think. I'm really bad at geography. <laughs> Now, that was the full roundup of the official leaks that we know to be true because they came from Riddler Koo. That wasn't supposed to rhyme, but it did. Anyways, so if you enjoyed this video and if you have any thoughts, please stick around the channel and comment down below what your thoughts are, what you think about all the questions I asked, and get excited for more analysis to come. I'm going to be tearing that new Scarlet and Violet trailer to shreds to find all the smallest bits of information that I can for you guys. So be excited for that, stick around, and I will catch you all in the next video. I've been Johto Johnny, peace out. <laughs>